Hello everyone, and welcome to this assembly and painting video for Kingdom Death Monsters Gold Smoke Knight, the last monster and final fight in the 1.5 version of the core game, aka the version for the reprint of the second Kickstarter. So, starting off obviously with the assembly, the Gold Smoke Knight out of all the core game monsters, and so far figures, as I still have the armor sets to put together because I'm magnetizing them, is easily the most painful model to put together in terms of its sculpt and how things match up. It is not the largest task that is still the Phoenix with its 30 separate hand pieces on top of the rest of the model, but this thing feels like it's molding was a rush job or its design and its separate pieces like this for example here of how there's a bit of cloth on the arm piece and it's just like why is that a separate piece or why is that part of the arm piece instead of part of the back cloth or not two separate pieces for that matter uh also how the whole body is minus the cloak three pieces and the cloak being the back, and this doesn't fit together well, honestly. Last I remember, I actually had to tape this model apart between finishing assembling it during this recording and when I actually got around to painting it, and not minor. I think I actually ended up prying this model almost entirely apart, except for small bits here and there, like the head. Because the head, as you're about to see, is three pieces that go together pretty solidly. They don't fit in too well. In fact, I... Like, while I was able to fit the head into the model itself, because as you can see, it fits oddly. Afterwards, I would recommend gluing it on before you glue the back in. Definitely do not glue it before this arm, which that I knew from dry fitting the model to begin with. But yeah, I ended up having to putty a lot of gaps. There's a lot of complexities in how this thing goes together, even with instructions, which I didn't have at the time, as this was just before the Kingdom Death site started posting their assemblies. Like, literally, they posted it after I was done assembling this model, like, days afterwards. And the hammer here. As a note, do not glue the two pieces of the head together first. I did that and had to pry it apart and it's probably a little screwed up now because of that make sure it's also facing the correct direction because there is part of this base here which is gorgeous in which it actually is intended to connect to like part of the base is molded for it to lay on and it is thus curved inwards as are the feet and i would recommend dry fitting the feet to the base, make sure they're shaped down enough to fit. I didn't do this, and there's clearly a gap between the base and his feet, like as if he's almost hovering a bit. I did fix it a little with putty, but for the most part, it's just, he's not solidly on there. In fact, personally, I would recommend potentially just flat out gluing his legs to the base to begin with. But that was the model fully assembled. It's still gorgeous even with the screw-ups like you can see some gaps still after puttying which I did before the priming and here's the post priming now there's a lot of sections of this model that I end up painting like blanket colors that I normally would cut out but because the base is actually a customized base and not just a flat piece in fact it's the only one in the core game I ended up showing the entire thing painted except for the black ring. So here's me painting in all the sections that I want black from, you know, basically the lack of color, and then finishing off with the black paint on the belt itself. There's a lot of different parts in the base that are basically supposed to look like endless wells and are just left black. I don't dry brush them anything. They are just completely black. Now, I sped up the video here a bit for this and the next color. This one being, and you can barely tell, is the off-white gray that I use for a base coat on all of my models where I want them to actually be white in the final, you know, post highlights of the model, where right? these are the sections that I want to look white. Because in this case, the 
cloak and it honestly looks like it is white lion fur. Like you can even see the claws as part of the mantle pieces underneath the shoulder. And this is me then painting also the eyeballs the same color. And I was debating painting them white. Speaking of debating painting the base different colors, there were three different ideas that I had for the base. Painting them gray, stone-like, so matching the idea of the stone faces, but even though they're skulls. Painting them to look like smoke instead of part of it, or as you can now see, actually painting them bone and making them look like skulls. Still, in the case of this, or if I had gone with painting them gray to look like stone faces, there are sections of smoke covering the skulls themselves that would have been painted to look like smoke, which I did. Now, this is, like I said, also sped up because it's just a large section of, let's paint the base. Oh boy, this model, honestly, it's base coat. Now, as any of you have seen my, many of my previous videos, especially for Kingdom Death Monster with painting, I do what's called a slot base coat, or I refer to. I just don't care how it looks. I just want to cover most of the surface area and get it on there. Not slop it on so thick that I lose detail, but just cover surface area and make progress. This model ended up a mess, and not because of that. It was just there are so many details, especially in that base, that it's just like I needed so much cleaning up. You will see the difference almost entirely. So here I'm going over any of the parts that I want to look gold in the end with a brass color, which is what I normally do for gold, but it's not something you see too often on my models because, honestly, they don't have that much gold. And as you can see right away, this color is very watered down. I, I don't actually like watering down my paints, and this is kind of one of the reasons why. I don't like having to deal with putting on multiple coats of paint. I, I slow enough with painting as is. Like, I don't mind when I have to, but I don't want it to make it a standard. And the brands of paint that I get, that they're metallic colors, across almost all of them, are already very watered down. And you can see it looks more like a wash in any areas. So, like, it's collecting in the recesses and everything. I, I just really don't like it. But... It works in the end, it's just more effort, or I have to actually glob it on, which I really don't like doing. And yeah, this is, not counting the base, majority of the model. Like, the smoke is accent, accents pieces here and there, and honestly, this might still be considered more than the base. And for some reason, I forget to paint the part of the hammer until after I'm done with the smoke. I just wanted to mention that now instead of later. And speaking of the smoke... I had multiple debates on how to do this as well, whether I wanted to start with it just being black and then dry brushing multiple colors onto it, or whether or not I wanted to start with it colored, be it a brighter color, or as you see here, a darker color. I, I went with a, a somewhat purplish red, like it's still very much a red, but under this light it makes it look somewhat purplish, which it kind of does. It's it is the darkest red that I have without going into some other very clear color. Um, honestly, I could have used purple, but I think that would have been odd. I've seen multiple different people's versions of this have different colors of smoke. And the, the most common of which being gold, because it's called the Gold Smoke Knight. But it's a gold knight that has smoke coming out of it, not smoke is gold. The smoke is, if you're going by the setting itself and many indications of things that talk about it, particularly some hunt events, the smoke that comes out of this thing is very clearly red. Like, uh, almost a flare color of red. It's not anything, it, it, like, it's not anything that would burn naturally or bur uh, at least basically it is not black it is not some other color it is red there are 
multiple hunt events that refer to it, and also excerpts of content involving his fight, that I won't say what parts those are for spoilers, that also refer to it. Black would be reasonable, but, like, honestly, anything's reasonable. Your model is your model. But, yeah, it's, it's stated as red. Now, this is where I just end up messy on purpose. Of just, I, I don't care what's on the ring, because that's going to get painted all black. And the base needed a lot of smoke on it. There was actually a lot of parts, and you'll see a lot of change between the slot base coat and just before the ink wash where, you know, the touch up, that it ends up, like, there are parts of those skulls that are just covered in smoke, and without taking a close look, they just look like part of the skull, because the skulls also look like, have lines on them, so it makes it a little hard to differentiate. Also, mentioning the wash part of, like, the brass is very watered down, one, here's me repainting certain areas that ended up not covered enough, and two, no matter what I did, the uh, the head of the Thunder Maw just always ended up washed out. Uh, I also didn't like how it turns out in the ink wash, you'll see that later. And then here's me applying some metallics, pretty bright ones. This is actually more the mid-range, I use the brighter range of metallics. And here it is, actually post-touch-ups. Uh, and applying the ink wash. But I, I use metallics for the belt buckle and the studs on the belt. Now, a lot of Kingdom Death monsters, monsters, honestly, in my opinion, have looked like putty when I'm done painting the base coat, even after touch-ups. This model looked really good. But all of them, including this model, and I say it that this model looked pretty good beforehand, because it looks even better after the ink wash, look amazing. Like, this just had so many details that you can't see all that well until the ink wash is put in, even in person, but on camera you, you see them even less. Now, it doesn't really help too much with the plated parts of the armor, but like, the cloth, the base, and some of the smoke just ends up coming to light. The head of the Thunder Maw also ends up coming to life more, but not everything gets filled in too well for some reason. Like, it just won't fill. Either too much paint or primer ended up in there, or it just didn't want to stick in there. Like, but here is the cloak. Just look at all those details. Just suddenly pop to life as they fill in with the black ink. It doesn't make too much difference on the smoke because it's already a really dark color. And also... The recesses are kind of large, so not a lot of parts to fill in. So here's me focusing more on the hammer itself, and it looks okay here, but when it dries out and I'm, you know, sucking up some of the excess, it just ends up, like, the holes on the back of the head just don't end up fill in, filled in all that well. And again, the base, just like the cloak, ends up coming a lot more to life. Now, touching up the base between filming also helped a lot, but this is just helps tremendously. And ink washing, once I learned how to do it in painting in general, made my models come to life tremendously, even before figuring out how highlighting really worked, which then helps even more, depending on how you want your models to look. But it's always something that I recommend, even if you're just doing a simple black, uh, I don't really have a lot of other ink washes because they're costly, just like all model paints. But uh, if you want more detail, I recommend things closer to what you want it to look. But black is always a good solid work with or thing to work with. Now, onto the highlight coat, as you can see, I've already started with. I'm highlighting first the smoke with a not as dark as it was before, but still a darker red. It looks very bright by comparison. But I actually end up using my brighter red as a another coat on top of this later, which you'll see. But even then, this still makes it look somewhat more eye-catching and popped out, which is the point of highlighting to begin with. And a reminder, yeah, the joints, the inner parts of the joints, those are have smoke coming out of them as well. Those are not solid. It's basically underneath that armor, there is no flesh. It is 
the the gold smoke knight is a creature of smoke in an armor. Although, how the armors for the various knights work is interesting because many of them they're not wearing armor that is their flesh like the dung beetle knight i know for sure and the flower knight well actually i don't know for sure with the flower knight but i do know with the dung beetle knight that's its flesh and possibly also with the others that's just interesting creatures now i'm going over the brass with a with an actual gold color to make it shine more this doesn't really show up too well on camera but it trust me it looked tremendously better once finished in person in, but like I said you can't really notice it too well even with it on top of the ink wash and yeah oh so much surface area of that needed to do a lot of touch-ups afterwards because a lot of the smoke ended up covered with it like the parts in the um, arms and around the face and then like I said earlier the cloak gets dry brushed white because I want it to look white. But this is also the same thing that I do with bone. So in a few seconds, you'll see me dry brushing the bone of the base also white, like this. Makes it pop out more, although sometimes it ends up a little bit too much, and that's just, oh well. Only so much you can do, especially when it's a large surface area of bone like this. But I'd rather have it pop out over being dull and almost tan like which is what a lot of bone colors end up being then here i'm going over very lightly like i said with a much brighter red uh, or a brighter red i should say i'm using my larger brush so that it ends up on there more briskly instead of more thoroughly and just ends up highlighting stuff a little bit again also screwing up the armor thank you you for touch-ups they help a lot yay something i don't film because i feel like it would waste everyone's time also i would just go crazy and then dry brushing the belt a very dark gray because it's not because it's black and it needs to be highlighted as well as the belt buckles that are completely missed for the underarms of the armor on the body and then like i said earlier I end up touching this up with my more bright metallic, and that's the model as a whole. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to press the like button. If you think somebody else will enjoy this, please share this video. Either way, you'll help this video get seen more. If you didn't like my video, go ahead and press the dislike button. But please try to leave a constructive comment as to why. Also, feel free to comment in general, such as any conversations that you want to have about painting in general, Kingdom Death Monster, or if you want to see other things painted that you've seen me do unboxing videos for or seen me talk about, such as a lot of War Machine Hordes, which I don't really do a lot of unboxing videos for, except for the mini crates, which those you can request as well. And if you want to see more like this, be it more painting videos, my unboxing videos, my board game overviews, all three of which that I do for Kingdom Death Monster, and anything else that I do on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.